Hi, everyone. I'm James Garbutt. And I'm Denny Duma. And this is the Garbutt Duma Real Estate Podcast. I think it is key to point out before we go into this one that we are going to come at this from an extremely neutral perspective and not let our biases or our personal opinions affect this podcast in any way. Appraisals, Monica. (laughs) This is just facts, guys. Appraisals (laughs) don't always mean much. (laughs) We've had so much experience with appraisals. Let's first start with what is an appraisal? Why is it necessary? When is it done? So essentially, anytime you are taking financing on a property, there's going to be an appraisal done. The purpose of it is for a lender, your bank, Scotia, whoever you're using for your mortgage funds, for them to have a third party look at the property to give them a value so that they know how much they should be lending on that property. If you're at an offer that's two million bucks on a condo, when that condo is worth eight hundred thousand dollars, the appraisal is not going to look that pretty, and the bank wants to know that they should only be lending eighty percent of eight hundred thousand, not two million dollars. Appraisals are. <clears throat> I think a necessary part of the real estate transaction for that purpose. Uh, But we just want to share how they actually occur. So the appraisal is the bank doing their due diligence on the purchase. Um, During times when, for example, during COVID and everything was shut down, banks did not visit properties at all. They would look at the listing online, they would call the listing agent, and then they would say, boom, here's what we think it's worth. Um, In all other times outside of that, occasionally they drop by and see the property. I would say um, one in every four or five of our sales, they actually go by. It's more often now. So during COVID, yeah, it was pretty rare that they go in person. Uh, I think it depends on the property type. If it's a newer condo building, it's pretty easy to just look at photos and look at the last few sales in that building and come up with a pretty accurate number. But... Unique homes, I uh, I don't know exactly, but my guess would be like close to 50%. Hmm, okay. Go through. Yeah, that aren't like the condos and stuff that you're talking yeah. about. Okay. Yeah, so what happens is the um, you get an accepted offer, you send your offer to your bank, the bank decides if they need to do an in-person appraisal, and then they send somebody by. This person usually looks at the listing, they come by, they snap a few photos, yes, it's renovated, they might ask how much you spent on the renovation. They'll always ask what the contingency or if there's anything coming up in the building because that goes towards their um, analysis of how much you'd be able to borrow on the property. And then from there, they go back to their bank, they write it all up and they send it to your mortgage broker and they say, okay, we say the property is worth this much. You can lend on this much. Usually, if there's multiple offers on the property, if it's had market exposure, typically we get exactly what the multi- exactly what the accepted offer price is. We get that back saying, yep, this is what it's worth. Weird, right? So weird. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty clear in an arm length, arm's length transaction when you have listed a property in MLS, you have marketed it correctly, you have held open houses and, and shown the property to potential buyers, and then there are three that want to rate an offer, and then you get an accepted offer. It's pretty clear that that's the market value. Market value is what a buyer is willing to pay for your home. It is different than an appraisal. It is different than an assessment. Those are three completely different things. Market value is what a buyer is willing to pay. So when you have an accepted offer in place with a buyer that you don't know, it's not your mom, it's not your best friend, it has been marketed to the public and someone from that public has chosen to write an offer, written an offer, When you have an accepted offer, clearly that is what the market is determining your home is worth. So in most cases, and I would say like 98% of the time when a home has been on MLS and marketed and gets an accepted offer, the appraisal comes back at the exact number of the accepted offer, which as a consumer, you're probably thinking like, well, why did I waste 300 bucks if they know that it was marketed on MLS? We did this properly and we have an accepted offer at $798,000 and the appraisal comes back at $798,000. Seems like a waste of 300 bucks. It, it really is just bank due diligence at that point. But the issue comes into play when 
clients for whatever reason, maybe they're planning to do a renovation on their home. Maybe they're planning to uh, take some equity out to give to their children. Maybe they're planning to take some equity out to uh, buy an investment property, whatever that may be. And they're not marketing the home for sale. They are not on MLS. They're not even in show ready condition. (laughs) So the challenge is when you go to refinance your home or condo or whatever that may be, appraisals can vary greatly when you do not have an accepted offer in place. Because at this point, the appraiser has to decide what market value is. Yeah. And the appraiser, ha- in in my opinion, has no tools to be able to determine what market value is. They're not realtors. They, like you would need to call probably five realtors if you wanted to get a variety of answers. And you'd have to get those five realtors to tell you what they think the market value is. And then you can maybe blend that all together and and say, okay, this is what the market value is. But appraisers... Other than looking up a few properties that have recently sold in the neighborhood, especially when they're unique, especially when they're detached homes, it's really complicated for them to understand what market value might be. And we saw it many times over the last few years where maybe the appraiser doesn't realize that, yes, that home is technically in Coquitlam right here and the other townhomes in that area haven't been really selling for that much, but it's actually more close to Port Moody than you really think. And the reason why these townhomes are selling for more is because of the proximity to Port Moody, the proximity to the train, the proximity to all of these amenities. They're not, it doesn't, it's not in line with the value of the townhouse that's in Coquitlam. So it's really hard for appraisers to be able to determine value when they don't know like the intricacies of the real estate market. This is not a shot at appraisers in like specifically. No. It's it's a shot a little bit at the system and the process. The like Monica said, the tools available to them. Like they have access to MLS, which is great, but they use an algorithm to pull a few similar properties in an area and just spit out a number, which is not an accurate way of determining market value. They're not really assessing a view or like understanding the uh, time, energy, and like money that a renovation actually takes. So it, I want to give an example about an appraisal. So I had a client uh, recently who uh, is planning to do a renovation on their home. They want to take some equity out to do this renovation. They hire or uh, order an appraisal from their bank. Appraiser comes. They get the appraisal back the two days later. The appraisal number is $1.74 million. He asked me what I thought the home was worth. And I said, probably in like the 185 range. But my guess, based on sales, this was in February. So based on sales, my guess <laughs> is that your appraisal is going to be 174. And it came back at 1745. <laughs> and he's like, man, how did you know? I was like, well, I looked at the last few sales. And there's no homes that are as big as theirs with a view. Uh, they have an updated kitchen. So like uh, with the updated kitchen... So we're like in that neighborhood, you're looking at smaller lots, smaller homes, no view, no renos. And so a lot of the sales are in like the one, three, one, four range. How do you accurately predict the sale of a bigger home, a bigger lot with updates, with a view from a one, three, one, four sale? It's a guess. It's a guess. We do it too. We just see so many more properties and we see this uh, equation so, so much more often that maybe our our um our predictions can be a little more accurate in terms of what a seller is looking for in terms of an experience on market but at the end of the day we also have the fallback on of the buyers the market is going to tell us what it actually is worth right yeah so it's not like you said it's not a dig at, at appraisers at all but if we're actually looking for what that home is worth on the market versus what that home is worth based on past sales. Mm-hmm. Those are two completely different numbers. Yeah. And there's no way for that appraiser to know that a home in that specific neighborhood, buyers will be looking at that home from that are looking at homes in Port Coquitlam, Coquitlam, Port Moody. Like the the type of buyer that's looking at that home isn't looking at homes just on that street. Yeah. So that there's no way to determine market value based on homes that have sold, you know, a hundred meters around in a giant circle of that house. There's just no way to determine market value. So not being very happy with this appraisal orders another one. 
four or five days later, appraiser comes. Appraisal comes back uh, a couple days later. 1.83. It's a little more exciting. $90,000 difference. But I think the point of this story is just uh, when you're on market and, and, and buyers are actually coming through your home and being able to write offers, it's uh, a fairly simple process most of the time. And most of the time, there's not going to be an issue in the, with an appraisal. So when you're refinancing, you're not on market, maybe coming out of a really slow market like we are right now, there's a $100,000 gap in two appraisals done three days away from each other. Right. So in, in markets like the one that we're experiencing right now, where things are, are moving in directions that are not very predictable, what should you do if you get an appraisal back that you don't like? This is advice to buyers out there, <laughs> realtors out there. If your client or if you get an appraisal back on a property and it's not what you expected, order another appraisal. Pay the few hundred dollars, order another appraisal. It's very, very likely. We've seen it happen many times. I had it happen to myself when I was buying and selling. I've had it happen to clients that bought townhouse subject free and the appraisal came back $100,000 less than what our accepted offer was, got it appraised by someone else, boom, it was the accepted offer price. So don't panic if the appraisal doesn't come back what, with what you were hoping it would be. Just order another one. Just keep ordering them until you get the price point that you like. You, I mean, start though with connecting with the appraisal company and asking to see what comparables they used. Because often they will just send them to you. <clears throat> and there's been numerous times in the past where I've just replied being like, okay, this is not applicable based on these three reasons. This one you shouldn't even look at because of the age of the building. This one you shouldn't look at because of location or whatever. And then I'll usually include another five that say, this is a comparable. This has the same view. This is the same age or whatever. And there's been numerous times in the past where they'll adjust the appraisal. Value. Yeah, some apprais appraisers are awesome like that. They'll be like, okay, great. They'll look at it. They'll really take a hard look at what they've done and they'll kind of try to blend it together or they'll give you an edited version. And other appraise uh, other appraisers are like, no, this is what I said goes and this is it and I know what I'm doing. Because oh, those ones are God though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've had some appraisers yeah. like that. So if you get one like that, don't even waste your time. Like move on <laughs> to the next one, order another one. That's That's my advice. We've done it. We've seen it many times. Um, yeah, get a second opinion. <laughs> The challenges with lenders, though, when they see a low appraisal, it may <clears throat> it may alter them lending on the property. So getting more appraisals after you have an accepted offer, if you've committed to a bank, may be challenging. You may have to then look at shifting your mortgage to another lender and then doing an appraisal with them for the first time. So um, we can shift a little bit here. How would you tell a seller to prepare their home for an appraisal? Uh, don't be there. <laughs> <laughs> but as a listing agent, it is really, really important to be there 100% of the time. <clears throat> Open the door, chat with the um, appraiser, share the experience of the listing. We were on market seven days. We had a crazy busy open house. There's 33 groups that came through. We had, you know, seven showings prior to the open houses. And then we ended up with four offers and here's our accepted offer price. Sharing that experience often will steer them in the direction of being like, okay, we understand that this is not like a family deal. We understand that this is an arm's length transaction and this is what buyers are saying the property is worth. Um, so I think that's a really important part. At the appraisers, the actual appraisal itself usually takes five minutes, maybe less. And they do take a few photos of your home. So it is important to have your home in like show-ish ready condition for an appraisal. Just if after an open house, you get the accepted offer and all your kid stuff comes back and everything, they, they may just not um, get to appreciate the functionality or the updates that you've done or, or the view if there's, you know, kids toys, toys stacked halfway up the windows or whatever that may be. So I, it, it is important to like, get to the finish line as a seller. Um, and that includes being in showish ready condition. For yeah, appraisals. I completely agree. The one um, instance that I was just talking about earlier about my client having an accepted offer on a townhouse, it was tenanted and the tenants quite literally had like sheets over their furniture, uh, papers taped to the wall. Mm -hmm. Just, it, it looked crazy, but it was a 
beautiful brand new town home. If you could wipe all of that stuff clear and it's gorgeous now they live in it and it's beautiful. But when the appraiser turned up, it looked nuts. Like it looked absolutely crazy. I don't think that you have to have it perfect, but you need to have it looking good. You need to have it looking good, especially if you are selling a reno, especially if you're selling a view, um, just ha have it looking nice, have it smelling good. App appraisers have biases just like buyers do. I think that was it. That was pretty thorough. Again, if you're an appraiser, <laughs> we're not uh, <laughs> no. trying to be offensive in any yeah, way. No. Just sharing the process. And because no. uh, I think a lot of consumers are, you know, in that like one out of 25 um, chance that it comes back and it's lower, consumers are freaked, freaked out. Yeah, they think they're thinking, oh my gosh, much, I paid oh way God. too much. Yeah. This is crazy. But understanding the process and like how this actually happens and what is the purpose of the appraisal and where is it coming from, I think is uh, is very important for yeah. consumers. I said at the beginning of the podcast that appraisers or appraisals are are useless. They're not. They're important. You need to be able to get a mortgage. They are important. We're mostly talking about it's very biased. They can come back at any number. They can the ver the range can be quite substantial. Uh, depending on what you're trying to do, if your property's had time on market, market exposure, or if it's tenanted. So just kind of look at what you have, especially if you're a seller, if it's um, tenanted, you know, make sure your realtor is going to show up so that they can tell them what's going on with the property and, uh, and ex you know, explain all the things that you've done to it and, um, and your appraisers should go fine. <laughs> I think it's important to note too that like if you're selling your home and you have five realtors walk through it, you're going to get five different numbers. There's no one concrete number that you can walk through a home and be like, that home is worth $2,015,462.73. It, it doesn't work like that. And if you have five realtors look at your home, you might have a $100,000 gap. It might be more if it's a unique property. It's difficult to um, understand how much a consumer is going to put a value on a certain aspect of your home. Let's say a view. A view is a good one. Some consumers might think that view is worth two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Others might not care about a view, and it's worth zero or ten grand or whatever, right? Yeah, it's and like anything. We go to to um, listing appointments all the time, and we tell a seller a price, and they've already heard a hilarious range of prices from other realtors. And these are usually realtors that know what they're talking about. Realtors that work in the industry, that work in that specific neighborhood. And we can go into a listing appointment and hear, well, this guy told me this much and that guy told me that much. It, it can be pretty hilarious. So, um, but that's before market exposure. <laughs> Once the market, uh, it has time on the market, we know exactly what it's worth. <laughs>